Just because a movie bombs at the box office, that doesn't necessarily make it a bad movie. And let's be crystal clear on this point. It could just mean that there were money expectations that it couldn't meet, marketing campaigns that were lackluster, or something else was happening on opening weekend. Now, obviously, some of the films that do bomb are terrible and deserve to rot away in the outer reaches of our social site, but not these bad boys. For today, we're going to look at some sinkers that weren't necessarily stinkers. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are eight box office flops much better than their reputations. Whoa, 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 but before we get started, I have an unrepressible urge to talk to you about today's list sponsor, Alliance Heroes of the Spire. This is a game that combines everything you love about RPGs with huge hero customization options. How many customization options? I personally counted there are over 10,000. Giant bosses, PvP, massive guild battle. This is a game that will push your skills to the absolute limit and all on your mobile. So check out the link below, download the game, and we'll even give you 50,000 gold and 50 gems to get you started. You can have a crack at myself and the rest of the What Culture Boys if you think you've got it in you. Anyway, yes, that's it. So back to whatever it was you were watching. Number 8. Euro Trip. Euro Trip is not what you call a smart comedy. In fact, next to this, Adam Cleary looks like a f***ing genius. It's also not original, it's not star-studded, and it's not even a cult classic. What it is, though, is endlessly quotable, silly, and the archetype of a teen comedy. It seems, however, that critics wanted this to be the next Blazing Saddles or Raising Arizona, deeming it a waste of time just because it didn't completely revolutionize the genre. If you can't enjoy a scene where a couple of teenagers trick themselves into having a pop brownie freak out completely with anxious stripping and the main character revealing that he once watched a gay porno once but didn't realize until halfway through because the girls never came, only to discover that the Rastafarian baked goods that they were eating are totally weedless, then yeah, go and have fun with your Excel spreadsheets. Number 7. Dread no, why didn't this film do well? It was like The Raid, but with Judge Dredd in it, and for that reason alone should have shifted bills. Dredd is Dirty Harry dressed up in futuristic clothing and devoid of any moral responsibilities. This is a man who upholds the law with whatever means necessary, and won't think twice about shooting a criminal in the back as they're running away from him. It's a grim, gritty cop movie that also relishes in creating beautifully executed, extremely gratuitous death scenes that are somehow disturbing and exquisite is it all the same. In that way, Dread is a simple throwback to the ultra-violent action movies of the 80s, like Predator and Invasion USA. There doesn't need to be a deep message to enjoy this one, but alas, the critics and the populace decided to give it a miss. Number 6. Walk Hard – The Dewey Cox Story Fans of stupid, nearly pointless humor will find plenty to like in this spoof of the modern music biopic. No, there's not a lot of depth in the jokes and the story is pretty much a note-for-note -note retread of Walk the Line, but it does spoofing in the right way. Take, for example, the running gag of Dewey becoming addicted to whatever drug happens to be cool at the time, which is a frequent trope in music biopics, and it's heightened by the fact that it's literally always the drummer accidentally introducing him to it, then warning him not to use them while listing all of the benefits of the drug. And of course, there's such an extraordinary collection of cameos that as soon as a joke starts to wear thin, you get Jack White as Elvis and Paul Rudd, Jack Black, Justin Long and Jason Schwartzman as the Beatles to liven up the proceedings. Number 5. R.I.P.D. Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges are two dead lawmen who are many decades apart in age and are responsible for defending the living world from ne'er-do-well ghosts who refuse to move on to the next realm. It's equal parts men in black and ghost. As a description, that's a film with high expectations, right? And while a lot of the film does fall flat, its buddy cop core is still thoroughly enjoyable. Now, Bridges was criticized for being too mush-mouthed as the ex-cowboy who struggles to understand modern concepts. Well, I was a snitch in life. See Nick like that. And although he's not exactly up to his true grit standard, this guy is a f***ing hoot, operating at maximum cantankerous. And Ryan Reynolds is, well, Ryan Reynolds, you either love him or hate him at this point. Either way, it's incredibly dumb fun. Number 4. The Thirteenth Warrior Delayed for more than a year due to poor responses from test screenings, The Thirteenth Warrior had a lot of people, including some of the actors involved, weary of its final product. But even after numerous reshoots and edits, this movie came out of the other end like a more polished version of Conan the Barbarian. And 
Why is that a bad thing? It's not like Gladiator by any stretch of the imagination, but it's so chaotically violent and driven that you feel the weight of its action more than its thin story. Again, this is something to be enjoyed as a spectacle action-packed rush rather than with a cup of tea over at your nan's. Number 3. The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford As the title suggests, this is a long, drawn-out film. Some viewers got a little fidgety from the way this character study moses along for nearly three hours without much in the way of big action spectacles. It's a quasi-epic, really, one that's more concerned with the psychology of its characters and the occasional dip into surrealism than it is with anything else. This is the thinking man's western, and it's just as rewarding to watch Brad Pitt become dangerously wrapped up in paranoia as it would be to watch him in a shootout atop a moving train. And if you can do that to a genre that lives and dies by the bullet, then you know you've got something special. Number 2. Children of Men I love this film so f much. The multiple one-shot sections, the gritty vibe of the whole story, and the acting which is just at once understated but powerful enough to create real tension. Children of Men is gloomy as f Every last bit of hope has been pretty much washed out of this dystopian world where widespread human infertility is leading to an all but certain extinction of mankind. This is not the feel-good summer blockbuster, even though it contains its fair share of explosions and gunfights. Despite all of these exciting action scenes, Children of Men is much more First Blood than Rambo First Blood Part 2, complete with even more psychological trauma. And number 1. The Postman Yes, I'm going to talk about The Postman in a positive light. Just two years after Waterworld threatened to permanently drown Costner's career, along with anyone else who was involved in the mammoth disaster, he decided to involve himself in an eerily familiar storyline. Granted, the specifics of the two movies couldn't be further apart, but the vague outline of a post-apocalyptic world and sole survivor raised a fair few eyebrows in the run-up to its release. The Postman takes a much more sentimental approach to living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, as Costner's character acts as the living embodiment of hope, an anti-hero that slowly becomes an actual hero as the film progresses. Costner finds a long-dead postman's old mailbag and uniform and quickly takes to using the relics as part of a con scheme. But as he delivers the old letters, he becomes genuinely affected by people's reactions to the links to the past. Is it cheesy? Oh god, yes, but the film looks the business while being so over the top. Also, Tom Petty is so incredibly cool in the movie that his few scenes more than make up for any other shortcomings the film might have to offer in my opinion at least. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. Huh. But you should like, share and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content, probably above my head. Check it out. Or don't. 50-50.